Welcome back students. We are in part 2 of Solid Design Architecture Software Matrix. Earlier, we have looked at the purpose of matrix in software. We have described the definition of matrix in software. We have looked at the different types of matrix used in software. We have discussed about coupling and cohesion. And we have looked at one example of matrix by applying weighted method per class in a library system. Now, please bear in mind, for this lecture, we are not looking at project-based matrix. We are not looking at traditional matrix. We are looking at object-oriented design-based matrix. The object-oriented design-based matrix is uh, very useful because we can use those numbers to determine maintainability of the design. In particular, maintainability attributes such as coupling and cohesion. If you remember, cohesion is about a class or a method whether it is specialized or not a highly cohesive class is specialized in just doing one very specific task a very cohesive method is just the algorithm of a very cohesive method is just doing one specific uh, objective coupling on the other hand is not about the design of that one class Coupling is about whether the objects instantiated from two or more classes, whether they are highly related or not. Highly related is in the sense of the one object of one class is using the object of another class by calling the methods. By calling the methods of another class. That's how the relationship is established. If this class is using the other class, right? if the object of this class is using the object of another class, then that means there is a relationship. That means if there's a change, if there's a change in the class that is being used, right, the user class will be impacted. If there's a change in the class that is being used, let's say class B is being used by class A, there's a change here in class B, class A is impacted. So this is called coupling. And um, in software architecture, it's very unlikely to have zero coupling because we have many many components so let's look at the first example from the previous lecture the domain of the example is library system here we have a class diagram. Um, we have how many classes here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 classes here. Now the first metric we have examined last week is weighted method per class. Let's revise that. What's the WMC for holding? 4, yes. How do you determine? By counting the methods. Yes. So we have four methods inside holding. Look at my pointer. Acquire holding, remove holding, a man title display details. There are four methods here. Suppose each method is given weight one, we have total of four multiplies one, four. Suppose that I change the weight to two. What is the WMC for holding? Four? No. It's four times two, which is eight. Usually the weighted method per class will be using you will be using weight of one, so that makes it easier just by counting the mat, the number of methods inside the class. Now let's look at the next matrix. CBO. WMC is about one class, the methods inside that class. That's uh, WMC, weighted method per class. CBO is different. CBO is between two classes. It's between the objects 
instantiated from two classes. Let's say we have class A and class B. Object from class A, object A, object from class, object from class B is object B. So they are they are coupling between the two of them because let's say in the object inside class B has a method called method B. Object A is using the method B of object B. That's how relationship happens. Um, if there is no coupling, that means the CBO will become zero. All right. If there's coupling, there can be more than one coupling because let's say class A object from class A may be using more than one methods inside object B, right? So definitely there'll be more than one coupling. So how many coupling should there be? Um, one, two, three, or four? Well, um, if it is about four, I think uh, that is not so complex. But if it's more than four, it means that the design requires a lot of testing. Yeah, that's a, that's a very high coupling. It's more than four. Now, this lecture on CBO could be quite long because there are many ways to determine coupling between classes. We know that the inheritance, right? So that's also coupling. We know that two classes which are not related by inheritance, but they are using each other's method. That is also coupling. So, if you look at the slide here, we have uh, uh, five types of coupling. Yeah, sorry, four types of coupling. Um, so, yeah, five types of coupling. CBO package, coupling between packages, not classes, but coupling between packages. Fan out, uh, you count how many relationships there are. You're not counting the number of methods, you're just counting the number of relationships. Let's say, um, if I have class A and class B, Okay, class A is using three methods of class B. So there will be there will be three couplings, right? But in fan out is considered one. Yeah? Fanning is just considering the pair of classes which have coupling. Fan out is just counting the pair. Message passing coupling, point C is by counting the number of method calls. So that's a between class and class B. Class A is calling class B three different methods. So MPC for so between A and B is three. You see, contrast this between contrast between MPC and fan out. Fan out is just one because class and class B have relationship. They are a couple. Fan out is one, but class A is calling class B three times, but, but uh, each one a different method. Therefore, MPC is not one. MPC is three, even though the fan out is one. Okay, be clear about that. And then um, B coupling to inheritance because we know that uh, relationship is not just. Um, Horizontal, it can be vertical as well between uh, superclass and subclass. So, coupling between objects can also occur vertically through inheritance. Yeah, and we have special metrics for that called DIT and NOC. We'll visit them later. Um, we also have coupling through abstract data type. So, what is this ADT? ADT includes uh, array lists, vectors, the good old arrays that we have been using, Q stack. And a lot more that you probably have learned in data structure. So this is another form of coupling, right? Because for example, the lecture class, the lecture class have uh, an array of student objects. The lecture object has an array of student objects. So is there a relationship between the lecture and uh, the student objects? Of course there are. And what relationship is this? The relationship is coupling through abstract data type because we have an array of student objects inside the class of uh, class lecture object, right? So that is coupling through abstract data type. Let us look in detail the first uh, CBO metric, CBO package, by looking at one example. Let's look at this slide. CBO package is given by the following formula. Number of links over number of classes. Let's look at the diagram below. So, you see, the ABC classes are all placed inside the same folder, i.e. package. And uh, how many links are there? How many arrows are there? One, two, three, four, five. There are five arrows, right? Between uh, classes ABC. And how many classes are there? Three. So, um, 5 divided by 3, that's a, that's a CBO.
Moving on, the next metric is plan out. Plan out is basically counting the number of pairs. Let's say we have class A and class B. Class A is calling class B multiple times because inside class B we have method 1, 2, and 3. And class A is calling method 1, 2, and 3 inside class B. So how many, how many plan outs? Three? No. The plan out is only one. Okay, the plan out is only one. Let's put, let's have an analogy. Let's say um, you have uh, there's a couple in your class, okay? Boy A and girl B. Now boy A may be calling girl B for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So there are three uh, activities between the two of them. The plan out for the boy. The plan out for the boy is only one because we're counting the pair between the two. Boy A and girl B. Alright? So that's, that's how we determine uh, plan out. Just by counting the pair only. The pair of classes. Um, now, closely related to plan out is plan A. Okay? Plan A is uh, the number of uh, uh, the number of relationship that the recipient has. Now, going back to the analogy just now, we have boy A and girl B. We have boy A and girl B, right? So, the girl B has a fan in of 1. The, fan, the boy has fan out of 1 because the boy is the one who's asking the girl for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So, fan out of 1 for the girl, fan in of 1. Now, let's say Another boy, boy C, where boy A, where boy A and boy C with girl B. So now the fan in for the girl is already two because boy A will be asking the girl out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, boy C uh, is asking the girl for a movie. So you see? This girl has a fan in of 2 because the relationship is between A and B as well as C and B, right? But the fan out for boy A, fan out for boy A is 1 because A to B. Fan out of uh, boy C is also 1 because it's between C to B. So do you get it by using this analogy? We're just counting the pairing. We don't count how many uh, methods being called. We just call, count the pairing. And whether the, the, the method call is the recipient or the giver, it determines whether it's find out or find in. So let's look at this example. I think this will be clearer. Suppose that we have two classes. Uh, we have multiple classes there. Class A, class B. Uh, in the class A is calling method 1 of class B. So where is method 1? Method 1 is inside class B. Alright, not inside class A. So, but method A is calling method 1, uh, class A is calling method 1 of class B. So, there's, there's obviously be a relationship between A and B, right? So, fan out for A is 1. What is the fan in of B? You see B is receiving, right? The fan in of B is also 1. Now, let's look at the second one, C between C and D. Now, C is calling method 1 and 2 inside D. Yeah, C is calling method 1 and method 2 inside D. So how many fan out for C? 2? No, it's 1 because we count how many pair. We just count the pair of classes. We don't count the methods. We just count the pair of classes. So C and D, there's only one relationship. So C, D. So the fan out is 1. How about fan in? Fan is only applicable for D because D is receiving, right? C is calling. D is receiving. So fan in for D is also 1 because D only has 1. Has one caller which is C. Yeah? So fan is one for D, fan out is one for C. Let's look at the next one between E and F. Uh, this one is interesting. Um, method one is inside F. Method two is inside E. E is calling the method one inside F. You see the arrow there? And E is calling itself because method two is inside E and E is calling itself. So how many fan out are there? Remember fan out is counting the pair between two classes. So we don't care about M2 here. We don't count.